Hello, this is Jack from Historical Weapons, and today we're going to check out this Magyar style bow by Salas Archery. This is from Etsy, and I think the bow makers are Indonesian, uh, the seller as well. This one is 120 pounds at 31 inches. Not sure if you can see that. It's quite hard to find fiberglass bows, up, you know, above 100 pounds, so I really like you know, being able to find some of these um, for a reasonable price, of course. And this is not your typical alley bow or AFR tree, it's something different. And they get heavy bows now, so we gotta try it out, folks. So this kind of bow is based on the Magyar style bows found in archaeological finds but made in a fiberglass bar. A lot of manufacturers today copy this design because it's quite co uh, common, you know, in Europe. Uh, to sell into that market as well it's a pretty standard like design throughout the world with static tips there are some variations on the curves but you know the Sasanian Empire used them Chinese Empire uses them um, with slight variations but generically speaking they're the same design with static tips reflex handle and uh, fairly straight tips you can see with the horn reinforcement again very typical now this is fiberglass bars wrapped with leather and it's got an arrow pass made of, uh, oh, nice. I think this is ray skin. Good to have the ray skin, but the ray skin is on the Mediterranean side. So I can only do Mediterranean draw if I want to use that ray skin. It would be nice to be on both sides, but that's okay. I, I get it. Now what I really like is the attention to detail. Look at the splicing on the SIA. There is, I think, fiberglass reinforcement or horn it's hard for me to tell either way it's reinforced along longitudinally which it makes it extra strong um, and then here it's got that nice handle but with also a little wrap here so you prevent your hand from slipping up which is also kind of nice and it kind of acts like a shelf um, and here very typical fiberglass construction i would assume it's epoxied and then wrapped with synthetic uh, string to really reinforce that uh, of course not be spliced and nothing historical in that context but this modern construction method has been proven to be very reliable and let's string this thing Whew. okay it's strong and very typical m shape with static tips here uh ooh, that is a heavy boy let's try it out Oh yeah, you can feel that. There you go. So when it comes to this fiberglass bow design, um, I think what they went for is shorter bending portion. So shorter fiberglass bars with longer CS. This puts a lot more stress on the fiberglass bars, um, but more historically accurate in its geometry. Um, the thickness of the, ham of the fiberglass is quite thick as well, but it's narrow. So it's less stable than a wider fiberglass bar, but uh, that stacks more, which also means it's more aerodynamic because the thinner ones, um, you know, when it's shooting, when the limbs are moving, they dig through the air faster um, and it makes a performance difference. Um, besides that though, let's see. I mean, the max draw of this thing, I'd say about 31 inches. I wouldn't want to pull further than that. Um, what's the draw weight? So 120 at 31, let's see what 28 does. Yeah, it's about 100 pounds. And then 30 inches. Yeah, it's about 115 pounds at 30. And for 120 pounds. Okay, yeah, about 120 pounds at 31. You can definitely feel that. Okay, let's do some shooting. Damn, I like it. <laughs> wow, I, I actually really like this guy. But the uh, the shelf is on the Mediterranean side, so I uh, kind of feel like I have to shoot this Mediterranean unless I want to damage the leather. I like that the bow doesn't creak. A lot of these fiberglass bows, they really creak and that sucks, but these do not creak, so that's good. Horn thumb ring. Okay. Wow. 
So I really like the attention to detail of this bow and how much effort is put into it. For a fiberglass bow, these are very premium bows. Um, a lot of the other ones I've seen are in the context of max production, but these Indonesian bowyers really take their time and effort to make something historically accurate looking, which is important. Not historical, just historically accurate looking. I mean, if you want a horn composite, it's a new bow, adds into the thousands of dollars, so we all know that. But I like the attention detail to the horn um, the the uh, inserts in there for the Sias, it's just so beautiful and I like how reliable and non-creaking it is. A lot of those 100 something pound bows, they, they tend to creak, but this one barely creaks. Like, do you hear much creaking? Barely anything. I like that, that gives me confidence. And the horn tips, they reinforce the tips, so it gives me more confidence. They use Indonesian hardwood for these, very strong stuff. Um, overall, very happy with this thing. I wish they have ambidextrous, uh, you know, these uh, race skins because a lot of us shoot ambidextrous in this kind of horse bull world. But uh, yeah, I like it. String is, of course, your modern stuff. Endless loop. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Folks, I recommend this guy. You got to check it out. Now, I wouldn't be pulling this beyond, like, don't try this as a long draw bow. 31 inches max, I'd say. If you want to be more historically accurate, I'd stick to the 30 inches or less for these kind of uh, Magyar style bows. Uh, and they do definitely pack mm -hmm. a punch. And not a lot of hand shock. I'm shocked at how few hand shock there is because it's quite a nimble and light bow. And I don't think there's a lot of mass to this. So that's why I think it's quite uh, lightweight and doesn't have a lot of hand shock. Thanks for watching.